Hey everybody, welcome back to Tool Jitsu. This, uh, this quick video is entitled Why Edmonton, Alberta is the Epicenter of uh, Tool Jitsu. Uh, before I get into that and, and the three uh, criminal cases that shocked uh, my conscience and uh, oh, I mean, I, I'm sure it shocked the conscience of uh, many people across Edmonton in particular, uh, certain despicable crimes have happened here. Um, again, this is the last primer video before we get, get into the actual fit form function application of tool jitsu, a little bit more of the hands-on type stuff. We'll just go over the main tools. You've seen a few videos back on the uh, how to everyday carry or EDC for tool jitsu. Um, simple, uh, simple, low cost, uh, not even a couple hundred bucks to get you started. Um, a good sturdy pair of uh, steel toed construction boots, hopefully worn in, because you're going to look like a little bit of a goof if you're uh, running around wearing brand new uh, steel toed boots that aren't worked in and, and you kind of don't have a construction or any kind of a work background. Um, but your main, uh, your main tool um, for me, hammer, three pound hammer, uh, creates a little bit of a distance. Um, used in a multiple attacker situation. Again, this is life and death. I take no responsibility for what you do or don't do. All your moral and legal uh, liability is your own. Um, read the criminal code, read the Bible. Um, this is for multiple attackers. This is for, uh, again, this is actually to do work, to do demolition with, to, uh, again, if you have a smaller one or a regular one, you, you kind of get the point. Um, multiple attackers, a little bit of distance, moves people around. Um, all this is designed to end a lethal encounter within seconds. This is the whole point. Um, simple flashlight. Creates a little bit of distance, a little bit of disorientation. Um, it's uh, not a fun thing to uh, catch uh, up close. Um, this one's uh, pretty hard, got some uh, pointed edge to it. Um, be careful, uh, have to get a new holster for the one that I had uh, that I had in the other video it was pretty loose wiggled around turn it on without knowing it and uh, <laughs> it can get pretty hot and um, burn up dust and other things like that so uh, just pick what works for you um, mini screwdrivers again this is for in close this is for uh, when you need time distance a little bit of space to uh, get away from somebody um, really anybody can use it super super versatile again you wound somebody without any kind of justification any of this stuff you're looking at uh, you're looking at some serious problems there um, again uh, steel toed boots um, flashlight hammer screwdrivers that sort of thing the three con the three cases that have shocked my conscience that um, to me are just despicable and again it kind of proves a point that uh, you can't always rely on the police to help you out um, especially if you're in a dynamic situation um, and they're just evil people in the world that's all there is to it um, there's good there's evil god created of people the world and people upright and good and uh, the more we've turned away from him um, the 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 more depravity and we we see it worldwide um, the, uh, the first one we're going to talk about just happened, uh, within a week or two. This was, and again, when I said there was a little bit of a military flavor to this, um, I meant it, um, something that we did in the Canadian, that we do in the Canadian forces or they do, I'm not in the forces anymore, um, is, uh, after action review. So, uh, this may or may not upset people. Um, you know, I, I, you know, the family of the victims or the family of the people involved, that kind of stuff. I don't come at this with any kind of judgment. I just come up with an observations. Uh, the first case within the past couple of weeks, week or so, was a 73-year-old man in Edmonton got attacked with box cutters. The guy, some, some random attack, slashed the senior in the face. Uh, the guy was caught, thankfully, charged with attempted murder. Um, that's, uh, I'm going to add the links to these cases um into into the description here so uh again 73 year old man walking um don't know all the details of it but uh, you just see these things happen and you see this stuff get reported and you can be black pilled to the point that you don't do anything about this or you don't come up with any kind of solution to the problem as a society that we just uh, stay indoors or um you know we just accept um or, or we we kind of take on that victim mentality so that's the first case. The second one was from a few years ago, uh, 2019. I believe it was 2019. This was an 81 year old woman who was sexually assaulted in her own home. It was a, like an assisted living home um, in Edmonton. Um, 
And again, that, that link will be uh, put into the video. I actually showed up to court to that one to, uh, to basically see, I, I wanted to see the conditions, the bail conditions of the guy who was going to get released uh, for committing this crime and uh, get a sense of him. Reality, just want to know where he lived, talk to his neighbors and that sort of thing. Uh, funny enough, on his court documents, uh, his release papers, found out after doing a little bit of digging, he didn't even live at the place where it said on the papers. And I had to, I, I, I led the Edmonton, gave the Edmonton police a heads up on that one. So, um, you know, we, my opinion, my opinion as a person, we got to start taking a whole lot more responsibility for uh, people in our own community, certainly in our own families, that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm not knocking anybody. There's lots of reasons um, why people live alone or why, why seniors live alone or why seniors walking down the street. I could just, I could just say, again, unpopular opinion, not meant to make anybody feel bad. Um, if it was my senior parents or maybe me when, or my wife when she's older, if I'm not around, um, I, I'd want to know my kids are there to take care of um, there. And, and again, vice versa, it was my parents. Um, Bible talks quite a bit about that, about uh, taking care of your parents when they're older too. So again, not saying anybody didn't, um, just pointing out the fact that these types of criminals are like coyotes. They attack um, those who are weak. They attack when they, they don't fear that they're going to get caught, like they, they you know, at dark, things like that. Sometimes it happens during the day. Um, but they only attack what's easier to attack. So anything you can do to make yourself harder to attack or make somebody who you love harder to attack, again, while mitigating any kind of liabilities, um, yeah, that, that's a good thing. The third case, uh, people who've lived here for a long time know this, is the Leo Teske case. The Leo Teske, um, dangerous offender. The, the link will be listed. He was uh, denied bail again last year. He denied his uh, revocation of his dangerous offender status. And um, again, that's, that's not anything other than to point out that these types of people exist, that there are people so dark and so dangerous and so evil, so demented, so depraved, and so willing to execute violence upon other people for, for, for fun, I guess, I don't know, um, that they exist. So this is why, uh, in a nutshell, part of the reason why tool jitsu exists, and this is why it exists in Edmonton, um, I've lived in this area, I've lived in Alberta for 16 years and um, me, again, just me as a person, um, if I see something I don't like, if I see something that is wrong, I, I do what I can to change it. And that's me as a person. That's how I live out practically, rightly or wrongly, Jesus will be the judge on that day of judgment. Um, did I love my neighbor as myself? Um, with the skills and the abilities that I've been given. So just a little bit about that. That's why um, this this topic, this tool, self-protection, living life, life to the fullest. Um, I'm about as pro-life of a guy as you can be. Um, the concept of shedding innocent blood is something that um, it, it, it rends at my heart. Um, I think this video is reverse image. Uh, so you know, right hand, left hand. People ding me on that one before, I think over a poppy once. So... Um, that's a little bit. Well, that's a little bit about me, my motivations, my passion for this. Why Edmonton, Alberta, is the epicenter of tool jitsu, and it will continue to be. Um, and my hope, my prayer is that uh, you know we we don't look at what could the police have done or the politicians or anything else like that. We are responsible. If we believe in democracy, if we believe in um, taking care of our own communities, this is um, tighter communities again, tighter families, tighter families. Um, the, the family is the cornerstone to any kind of functioning civilization. God and Jesus in the heart, taking care of our families, loving one another and letting that love and that strength radiate outwards into all people we meet. Um, again, for those of you who don't know, my name is Peter and um, that's why uh, I'm passionate about Tool Jitsu. And um, that is why uh, Edmonton, Alberta is the epicenter of Tool Jitsu. Thanks so much, bye for now.